Hello and welcome to the Build a Soil YouTube channel. Today is harvest day. It is episode 24 and we're on day 66. We're in the 10th week right now, but we won't finish it because it's time to harvest. In the last episode, I discussed the trichomes, where we're at, how we could have gone maybe a little longer and some went a little too long, which means we're at a pretty good target to do a full room harvest. You can be as attention to detail here as you want. You could take every part of the plant, look at all the trichomes and pull them at that uh, according rate, but I like to have a variety. And for me, when I harvest, at least when they're mature, um, everything's good. As a new grower, a lot of times you'll hear eight weeks and you'll see if maybe you can pull it like six or seven, or someone will tell you they have a really fast finisher. While there are a lot of fast finishers out there, most of the time I go at least nine weeks. And it's turned out that going almost 10 on the Northern Lights was a little too long, but I think it's gonna be really potent. Also, the uh, Coots, the Pacololo, the one, those look really finished, so I'm, I'm excited. There's one that could have gone longer, but looking at the trichomes on some of the finished ones, there's a lot of amber. And I'm, I'm happy with that, as mentioned, as you start to grow something more than once, you'll learn where your favorite window of harvesting is based on your own interpretation, based on trying it multiple different ways. And we always encourage you to do that. That way you become independent. As we go through today's harvest day, so I just wanna focus on a few things. I've got the room next door set up, which we'll show you in a second. It's gonna be a little above 60 degrees at the peak of the day because the air conditioner can only keep up so much. Its bottom setting is 62 degrees. If I keep it on high and just run it, regardless of temperature, it should be able to bring it down in that 60 degree range. But during the peak heat of the day, it's 90 degrees out, it's probably gonna be in a 67 to 68 degree range, maybe a little bit cooler, we'll see. But to me, that's totally acceptable. I get a lot of questions from all of you asking, hey, I'm about to harvest, I've watched your video, I'm at 65 degrees, is that okay? Or I'm at 72 degrees, is that okay? Yes, it's all okay. When you get above say 80, 90 degrees, I'd be very concerned with the quality level and our goal is to keep it closer to 60 degrees. But that's the target. There's been herb growing in worse conditions for a long time. You have to focus on the weakest link. If you're at a warmer temperature, you wanna keep moisture down because you don't, want to, you don't want to get bud rot because it's warm and moist. In that 60 to 75 degree range, I feel like you can dry very well. Just be aware that it's slightly warmer than we want. And the main reason that we want it cool is these terpenes are volatile and some of them are gonna off gas with a little bit of increased heat, exposure to light, the less stable terpenes and they're gonna dissipate. We're talking carbon and hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it's not gonna stay, it's not gonna stay exactly as it was while the plant was growing. But through proper drying, we can preserve the best parts of it. And with good genetics, good technique, you're gonna have incredible odor and you're gonna have incredible odor to taste translation. And that's the ultimate of what we're after. That's what's fun to share with your friends. If you grow a whole bunch of plants and one tastes really good and smells really good, that's the one you're gonna wanna bring to share. So that's, that's the goal. Right here, we've got the auto flowers in the quadrant one. This one right here, this feminized seed, this is not an auto flower if you've been following along. I'm gonna let it go a little longer. If I harvest this plant and I bring it in like a week after the others, it's so small, it's not gonna jack my moisture too much. But what I don't wanna do is like harvest half the room, wait a week and then harvest the other half in the same drying room. It'll mess with the moisture. So for me today, this is the only one I'm gonna leave in here because I want it to go a little bit longer. Everything else is gonna get harvested. And right away when I look at this one, what I'll have to do to separate these two plants is to either pull this trellis net off or to cut it off. Depending on your scenario, it might be easier to cut it, which is a waste of the plastic or you can gently pull it off. The next thing that I wanna do that's a little harder when the net is on, but I can do it, is I wanna defoliate. You're just staggering the work. So by the time it goes in the jar, I'm gonna want it to be fully trimmed. But when I go to hang it, it's okay if I just leave all the leaves on and hang it. It's not gonna ruin the herb. But I feel like I could be exacerbating some problems if I just don't defoliate at all. And I wanna avoid some of those problems. So. If you're in a drier climate, it makes more sense to leave more leaf material on because that's more moisture attached to it that can slowly dry. And, and doing the whole plant works the best because the whole plant, based on that whole stem, slowly relieves the moisture from the big stalk and all of the buds. As soon as you separate all the buds, they tend to dry faster. What we're after is a prolonged drying time. So right here, if you look, I've got a leaf that if I were to pull off, it's already dying. I don't wanna leave that in here because it's gonna be absorbing moisture and it could then start to mold because it's dead and I don't want mold in here. So to encourage cleanliness, I really think that you should go through and at minimum, defoliate everything that looks weak. 
right? And some people will leave some of these big ones on and they'll hang down and kind of shield the plant, especially if you're drying in less hospitable environment where there's dust and stuff, this will kind of shield the plant. But what I typically do is because I'm staging the work and I'm already gonna do this, I'll pull every fan leaf off, either with my hands or with scissors, that does not have any frost on it. And the, the main reason is I'd like to keep all the leaves intact that do have the frost on there so that when I go to the second stage of trimming, I can buck all those fan leaves off into a collection area where I get to harvest those trichomes instead of throw them in the trash or into the worm bin where all this is gonna go. And so there's a couple ways. You could have a bucket here and some scissors. A lot of times you'll find that you get limited with the scissors and so you'll start going by hand. Eventually you just start dumping it on the floor and agree to come back and clean up later. It's easier to just strip and rip, come back and sweep it all up when you're done. Make sure that you clean it up. The other thing is I try and get everything that's accessible here first. Personally, this is easy. I go through, I grab everything with my hands. And then when I'm done and I harvest the plant, I'm gonna harvest it, flip it upside down, put it on a hanger, put it in the dry room. Then in the drying room, if I have enough space, I can stand there and I can pull off some of these lowers that sometimes are harder for me to see when I'm standing here. It's easy to do the first one perfect, but when you've got a lot to harvest, you end up missing some stuff. You just wanna get the job done. And like I said, as long as you get the main ones that are kind of dying off of here, there's no real reason why if you're super busy and, and the weakest link is that you have to harvest, I would say just flip it, rip it. Like grab the plants, flip them, get them in the dry room. Then you can come in there and defoliate as you please as opposed to telling yourself, I've got to do it all perfect and never having enough time. That being said, I'm going to talk about a few of the other quadrants and then I'm just going to grab my tools, get after it, and then I'm going to show you the dry room with the first plant that I bring in there. And then I'm just going to repeat the process. Maybe we'll like speed it up as we go. And essentially all we're doing today is a little defoliation, putting it into the dry room. When I get in the dry room, I'm gonna go through the conversation of what we've done to set up our dry room, and I'll revisit the basic principles of drying one more time so that you can understand what we're after. And I just encourage you, if you've, if you've really not considered how important the drying process is, this is one of the most important parts of the process. We just put all this work into growing this great herb. We don't wanna ruin it, and you certainly can ruin it right now if you don't dry it properly. Come on in here, and I'll show you the, the Northern Lights 5. This ended up being my favorite one. We'll see if that holds true. Like the purple's coming in and the frost on here. So NL5 definitely coming down today. All, everything except for this. These are so healthy. I don't see any leaves that are like of a major concern in here. So I could really just flip these plants upside down. But because there's some big leaves and they're just easy, I'm gonna spend a little time defoliating everything that I do today. My hopes was to get in here right when I walked in the door this morning and already be done by now. But I had a number of things pop up that I had to tend to, an emergency on the farm, a couple other things that needed to be done. It's gonna be the same in your life. If you've got a big harvest, it's always gonna take a lot of time. And the goal is to focus on the weakest link, get the job done no matter what. And don't beat yourself up if you can't do it perfect all the first day. And I think I said this in the last one, but I think this is gonna be my favorite in the group. Really like the Beefcake D. Now, this is holding a special place in my heart. Coot, if you're watching, these are some of my favorite plants I've ever grown but I don't know what to expect at all. And I'm really looking forward to it, where this I know is in the profile that I like, and I'm really impressed by the genetics from that perspective. So I guess all I'm saying is I'm really looking forward to this harvest and we should get started. Auto flowers first, and we'll just work our way through quadrant one, two, three, and then four. One more thing that I wanted to mention, labels. I just grabbed what was easiest. I have a big Sharpie and some uh, tape. I need to label each stalk. And so there's a couple ways I've used the plant labels in the past. They're just plant tags you wrap around the stalk. I just grabbed this today because I had some. You can also, if you're having to cut branches for whatever reason, you can group the branches together with your label. Just make sure that if you're really pheno hunting, if I lose track of which one of these is which, I'm not gonna be able to identify my favorite back to the mom plants that I can take clones. And so do your best if it's important to you to label it. If on the other hand, you don't care because you don't have any moms of any of them, just harvest it and smoke it. It really doesn't matter. But at minimum, it's fun to know which is which on the jar, right? And so you really know exactly what you're getting into. I've got regular scissors. And then for the stock, I just have a bigger one. You can use regular scissors, but you're gonna be like breaking your scissors, wiggling, wiggling in there. You can use a knife, but sometimes it's easy to cut yourself. I'm gonna see if I can't take this off without everything falling. Otherwise, I'm just gonna leave it on and cut it off. Looks pretty easy, let's see. Just wanna be gentle here. It's pretty good. Oh my God, it smells so good. You can wear gloves if you want. Some people get like an allergic reaction to all the trichomes all over their skin. Others are worried about the odor or just stickiness. Of course, there's cleanliness. This is all for me and my wife. My hands are clean. So I just usually personally don't wear gloves. 
but when I trim, it gets so bad, I usually do. So take that for what it's worth. I'll do that plant next. So give me a minute while I defoliate. Very, very excited for it. I mean, they're raunchy. I thought they'd be all fruity and I don't really like that that much, although I like to have some. Ah, oh, I stripped one, so be careful. My fingers grab this leaf and I just stripped the whole nug off. Silver lining, I get to dry this one on my desk and have a little early puff. So let me set this aside so it doesn't get dirty. I'm gonna do a lot of these bottom ones when it's upside down so I don't have to reach my arms in and get so many trichomes like all over me. While I'm doing this, if you're growing the living soil way, there may be a fungus gnat stuck in the leaf. There might be a row of beetle that climbed up from below. And usually there's only a little bit, but you have to be aware of it. You don't wanna cause bud rot. Be inspecting everything and looking at it. Make sure that when you go to hang it, there's not something obvious that you could have avoided, right? Like a fly that's stuck on there. Cut it off, get it out of there. Inspect it. We're growing plants here, especially if you're outdoor. Depending on your situation, you wanna be very observant. The other thing you wanna look for is bud rot, especially in the bigger buds. So always go to the tops. What I do is I'll crack open the inside and I'll take a peek. You probably can't see that, but it looks beautiful in there. There's no bud rot, everything looks healthy. That's what I'm looking for. And that's part of the harvesting process because if you throw one bad plant or one problem into the dry room, it can become a, a bigger problem than it needed to be. God, it's so frosty. A lot of these leaves have like frost up the stock, even on the bigger ones. So I'm gonna flip it and we'll talk in the grow room while I strip some more leaves off. Oh yeah, there we go. So now I can see these pretty easy, access more of them. Not too worried about getting all of these, like I said, but I wanna get the worst offenders. Sometimes a shake, We'll get any of the little dry ones to reveal themselves or to break free. Everything looks good. Nothing else is like dead leaf material in there. Right here, you'll see I've got the air conditioning tube coming out, blowing hot air out the door that way. Over here, as I unzip it, I'll explain a little bit. So I've got a fan, which I've not put in there yet, but we need to have moving air, so I'll discuss that. Come on in here. The air conditioner's in that corner. I don't want direct air blowing on it. And I've got it draining because they're gonna take moisture out of the air. So I've got it in a drain tube here so that I can empty it pretty regularly and keep up with it. I've got it set on the lowest temperature on high. It's not insulated in here, so it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna really, really help the process. So I have the whole plant, and usually what I do is I pick one of the branches that looks like it's stronger where it's not gonna break, but if I pick one too big, it's hard to force through the hanger. This one looks like it'll hold, and so I'm going to just push the hanger through there and see if that'll hold the weight. It looks like it'll hold without breaking, so I'm satisfied with that. Occasionally, if you're on a weak point, it'll bend right here. And then all that I do is I hang it up in an area that's uh, not gonna touch the sides of the tent. Now, if I have a lot of little hangers and a lot of little plants, or if I have a whole bunch of branches that I had to cut to get out of a canopy, what I'll sometimes do is hang like a scrog screen up here, so there's a lot of points to hook. Some people will tie string and just hook right on the string with no hangers, the branches. There's like a thousand ways to do it. All we're trying to do is suspend the plant upside down in the air, and that's the minimum. For me, this is easy. I usually have some hangers around. I put it on there. I can grab it. I can take one plant down at a time to the trim area and know that that entire group of trimming is that one plant so that I can label accordingly. So that's the way I do it. Although it's the right humidity in here right now and the air conditioner should take moisture out of the air, when I fill it with all the plants and zip it up, it might get too humid in here. And if that's the case, I'm gonna have to open a vent or do something about it to keep it in my ideal 60% humidity maximum range. Next thing that's gonna happen is it might not be humid enough in here with the air conditioner running, or because it's a pretty big tent, it may not raise the humidity up above 60 or 260. If that's the case, I'm gonna add a humidifier. I've got one ready, I just really wanna make sure it's totally scrubbed clean, RO water and I'm gonna put it in the corner away from direct contact with the plants. I showed you the fan when I, came, when I walked in here. It's a mountable one, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it. The most important thing is we want indirect air movement to have constant air moving. That's gonna pull the moisture off of the plant as it's drying so it doesn't turn into bud rot while the moisture that seeps out sits right there on the plant material. So air moving, indirect, 60% humidity, 60 degrees. And remember, if you can't get there perfectly, know where the weak link is. Better to be under 60 than over 60. And if you can't get quite as cold, don't worry about it too much. And like I mentioned, if it's warmer, maybe a little bit lower on humidity, maybe 55%.
So just be aware of those things and I think you'll do great. Right now I'm gonna look this over and make sure there's no leaves that I missed that are like critical. I'm gonna grab a broom when I'm done and just clean up in here. So I'll throw them wherever I want for right now. Okay, it's not perfect, but I think that level of attention is enough and that won't take me too long to get it all done today. If you've got questions, it's a great time right now to pop these questions in the video and I'll make sure that I revisit this drawing page, answer some of the questions and maybe put it in an FAQ. This one is my favorite one visually out of the two that were in this earth box. Really excited about this one. So I'm gonna be gentle here and see what happens, but they're floppy, got heavy at the end there. Since this is just one plant, I'm just gonna leave that net on there and I'm gonna do all my work in the other room because see how this fell and touched? I don't want any of this to fall and get dirty right now. Woo! This one smells louder. As soon as the fan hit it, it was like in my face. So I can see some obvious ones here. I'll do the same. But either way, I'm gonna have to clean up the mess one room or the other, so it doesn't really matter. I can be a little more, see, I'm already pulling stuff. I'm just gonna go in there and do it. But I can be a little more aggressive in here when all the plants are out of here. In there, I have to be very careful when I sweep. I don't wanna whip up any dust and get it on the plants. So if you've got like a garage, you're doing this, do all your cleaning like a couple days before. Don't come in there and start shop backing all the dust out of your garage while your plants are hanging, okay? So let's go in the other room. All right, another little snack for later. Whoop. Now this should be easy without hurting the plant. All right, if I'm not careful, I'm just gonna spend all day here. You can kind of get in your zone and just see another leaf every time you grab one. And I'm just gonna stop myself. And the main reason is not that I don't wanna do a better job, but I've got a lot of work to do. So I'm gonna grab some more plants. And then once we turn the camera off, I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna spend a whole bunch more time making sure I didn't miss any leaves and at least getting comfortable with it. And I can stagger that. Like I mentioned, once it's hung, I'll be able to go through and each time I come in here, spend a little more time making sure that everything's plucked clean. At that point, the job's done. So I can rest easy this weekend knowing that there's almost no plants growing down here. That little one in the earth box will literally self-water itself all weekend long. Although this is a lot of fun, it's a lot of responsibility. So it's gonna be pretty good to have these hung up today and I wanna keep going. So I'm just gonna start grabbing plants and bringing them in here. Since this one was just kind of draped on, it should be easy to pull off. If you've grown through it and you've got three layers, there's like no chance. You're just gonna have to cut it. But I wanna save it if I can. Ooh, this smells good, kind of fruity. A little funky. It smells so different than it did a little while ago. Okay, so far this isn't really snagging anything. Okay, I think I can get the one plant that I'm after now. Now, some of these branches might be interconnected. Oh man, this is crazy. This is like wrapped around, I forgot, it's totally outside of the PVC here. So, for me, I'm gonna have to either drag underneath the PVC or go above it. And since I'd rather go above it, I'd have to shove all this in there. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I think I'm gonna pull through here, get it all to flop down, but it'll flop down towards the dirt. I don't want it to get dirty. I can lay some plastic in there so that if it hits, it's clean. I think I'm just gonna baby it under there and try and pull it out the hole here. Gonna baby it, make sure none hits the dirt here. Woohoo! Okay, now I had a couple branches bail out here. They're barely touching. I don't wanna move them because I don't want them to move around in the dirt. One might be touching, the rest are kind of hovering. So I'm gonna get right after that one next. This is a big plant. Look at the tree trunk on that. This NL5 is nice. This is the one that I wanted to keep. It smells really good. I can't wait to update you on a smoke report on this one. Always wanted to grow the NL5. Nice. So I can do some, I can obviously do a lot of defoliating on this one, but I told you I wasn't gonna sit here and make you watch me do that. So I'm gonna go get it labeled and move on to the next one. I'm gonna leave enough space where I can come in here and I'm just gonna do this afterwards. This is the front left corner, so it's plant number four. There we go. NL5 number four, all right. So this one was kind of hidden in the back, but it's beautiful, it has some nice tops. I'm gonna get it next because I don't want anything hanging in the dirt. Get the net off there. This one kind of got dominated by the others, but it still has some nice buds on it. NL5 number one. This little tiny one, like I just wanna see if it ever became anything. Look at it, it became absolutely nothing. This whole plant got completely cannibalized. That's as big as it got here. It's like underdeveloped. Look at how, like, see how this is like not even any color? 
all completely lowers. That should have been stripped, but I didn't strip this one because I was just really hoping it would come up to the top of the screen. I'll just grab this one. I'm not even gonna label it. That can happen. When you put a whole bunch of seeds in one bed, sometimes the, the certain ones dominate. Now, here's what I would say. If this has some odors that you're really into or is really tasty for some reason, you can give it another run. Sometimes it just got cannibalized by the more dominant early veg genetics and might still be worth pursuing. For me, since nothing's really standing out, I've got others that I like better. I'm not gonna worry about it. This one I'll remember because I want to label and this is the number two. This one also got kind of cannibalized by the ones that were around it. Okay, got it. You can put three or four plants on one hanger, depending on how tight your space is. To keep them separate for labeling, I don't usually do that, but is this the last one? Wow, this is great. This is all one plant. That's a big plant. So since this is all on there and it's just one plant, I don't need to worry about carefully removing the net. It's easier when it's upside down for me. The last thing I want to do is like really pull on the nugs and strip them or ruin any trikes. So I'm going to see if these are in here and just go for it. This has some side branches, but the most space is this way going straight up towards the light. So I'm probably just gonna do that. That's a big one, that's the biggest one I think. Woohoo, that's the biggest one. Okay, I'll put that one right here. Don't forget, got a label. That is the number six. Now if you're ever stopping through, a lot of times we'll have the moms. And if we don't need, cut, need cuts right away, we're happy to just share a cut with you, just give it away. We always try and share it. All right, let's get another one. Back to the beginning, only a little bit, a bit of cover crop survived and we'll talk about re-amending in another episode. We've done it before. Let's move on to the next bed and start pulling plants down. I've got the loppers right here. I think I'm just gonna start with these first ones and I'll know what they are and label them accordingly. And I'll start with this first one right here up front. So this is the number seven, the smallest out of all of them. And what I think Coot said the most reminiscent of the one. Look at that, that's pretty nice. Smells good. Coot had a pretty good description for this. He was like rosewood and overripe mangoes and like a lot of those odors are, are in there. The PO number seven, the Pacololo one. All you're gonna watch me do is literally cut down these plants and bring them into the other room. And I know there's a lot of you that would probably watch that and wanna hear me talk about all the different genetics, but I'm gonna do a better job. I'm just gonna harvest this. We'll turn the camera off. I'll put them in the dry room. I'll start to show you them and record snippets as they dry over the next two weeks to get to that target where we're gonna be trimming it and putting it in jars. But then I will tell you what I think about all of them after I go through and smoke them all. I'll show you more flower shots. I'll update you the best of my ability to show you what we're able to pull out of here. But I'm impressed, um, I'm happy, I'm stoked with all of the breeders, all of the different genetics that we ran this time, I'm very, very happy with. Despite the couple of issues, a lot of times that's the grower learning how to, to run them. I'm not perfect, like always. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, ask your questions in the comments. You can duplicate what we're doing and even surpass us at this. I think that every one of you is capable of it. The most important thing is to follow the environmental protocol, get really good genetics, use good inputs, and make it a simple solution so that you can stay disciplined to it. And if you follow that, the build a soil way, you should have bountiful harvests that you can share with your friends and they should be of the best quality. That's what we're after. I'm gonna wrap it up today. As usual, I've got more work to do. We're gonna be following through on the next video and trim and talk more about it. And then I'll do like a smoke report where I really do a deep dive on what I thought. That's all coming down the pipe. In between there, we're probably gonna have time to do some more FAQs. So if you've got questions, like usual, put them in the comments here, tell your friends about it, subscribe. If you have somebody that needs to learn, send them a video, whatever it does, let's just keep this whole thing going. We appreciate you guys. And until then, I'll see you on the next Build a Soil episode.